Hey, Cancer Seekers. The Protectors. How fitting. I'm recording this on Memorial Day weekend. Um, but this is for the next month from whenever you're watching it. So, um, Yeah, you know... <laughs> You protect so that those you protect could have the privilege to not have to protect. And complain about the way you protect and whether you should protect. You protect their privilege to judge their protectors. I mean, I know it's uh, common in younger generations to be less appreciative of those who give themselves to sustain our privileges and our freedoms. Um, I find that it comes from privilege and ignorance. So if your children do that, or if, you know, maybe sit them for a talk, have them watch a documentary, you know, um, education is key. Um, if you do that, Come to the right place at the right time to be a to receive a little kick in the booty. You are a protector. You know exactly how it feels to have that done to you. So, so anyway, Cancer Seekers, what's up? Um, I was about to say something. This is what's up. The Emperor. Cardinal Fire. Leadership. Protection. Um, strength and unity. Operational, practical system. Right? The mechanism that makes things move on time, in place, that keeps the mundane order. Um, sits on top of chaos. Mitigating it. The cube here uh, the emperor sits on is connected to the same archetype of the of the chariot, which is the Melkaba. It's the place in which consciousness sits and through which consciousness travels. So it's interesting that the card, the emperor, that symbolizes structure, order, is the one that also holds the consciousness and its ability to move. Without order, there is no healthy freedom. There's a difference between healthy freedom and chaos conflating chaos with healthy freedom is very dangerous on a personal level and it's very dangerous on a societal level. It's just dangerous as a whole. Chaos is the shadow of freedom. Now, there's a lot of mythology and ethos behind the word chaos, especially amongst uh, my likely audience, I recognize that it's um, also, you know, the empty space, one might say. It is raw life force, another might say. Sure. Electricity is raw life force. Great. But when it's not conducted and channeled uh, to the right place by the proper channels, it is very destructive and dangerous and painful. Same with chaos, right? 
there's no judgment to the essence of chaos, more so to how it is used, or should I say abused, to excuse wanting to take other people's freedom in the name of alleged freedom, right? The emperor here is the archetype of Odin, of Zeus, of um, Hashem, the Israelite god, of the masculine paternal divine force that sustains the world and keeps things on tracks and prevents us from collapsing into space and spreading into our molecular structure. It's the glue between the molecules. Empty space, empty space harnessed properly. And it's very much you, Cancer, in a way. I mean, this is, cardinal fire is more like Aries archetype, but you're cardinal water and you are the ocean. You know, the ocean knows the importance of staying contained by gravity, by earth. It is organized chaos. It is the freedom. It's the flowing water that flow where they needed, that listen to the moon. Be sure to tap into that and not lose yourself. Three of Wands. You might be dealing with an actual Aries because these are two cards that can represent Aries. Um, so that's for some of you. Others of you might have Aries in your chart. Um, and others of you, it could just be the Aries archetype of time to know where you're heading and lead yourself there. Based on who you know yourself to be and what you know yourself to want. Time to take all that fire and utilize it to bring life and creativity to your world. Don't let it just spread out and cause hazard or just not do anything. Phase out, right? There needs to be a plan, a direction. It looks like there is a plan and direction here with these two cards. Hello, Venus Aphrodite. Um, the Empress, Demitar. The Empress to the Emperor in between the Three of Wands. Um, so there's a couple here. There's a... There are matching counterparts, masculine and feminine. Mars and Venus coming together in a very mature, um, wise way. The emperor is all the kings of, all, of the four elements. The empress is all the queens of the four elements. Um, and there's this, you know, they are yours and you are theirs and you have a clear direction that you're heading towards together. And maybe now you're executing the plan or um, writing the details, envisioning, Maybe you both are leading a community. Um, wow, Cancer, this is beautiful. Two of Cups, Queen of Wands, Ten of Cups, and Five of Wands. Interesting. Okay. So definitely partnership, family life. Um, there is someone either in the family or close to the family that is going through some strife. Um, maybe you have a child that is getting married, getting engaged. Maybe they have some 
uh, disagreements. How should the wedding look like? Or how how many kids do we want to have? <laughs> where, do, where do we want to live? Um, should I take a job or should I, or can I be a freelancer? Um, you know, there's love there. There's creativity. There's support. There's a lot of light. This is not. I feel like it's it's um, trivial things. You know, it's not like meaningful disagreements or anything of essence. It's it's the, tri the trivial issues of life. You know, um, that can be. worked on quite easy and figured out you just the the advice is to take a different approach to step outside of the box and um be creative there's a creative solution to whatever minor difficulties arise Something with a lion is also coming through. Or the archetype, archetype of a lion or zodiac sign, maybe Leo, leadership, warmth, wisdom, knowing when to act and knowing when not to act. Speaking of knowing when not to act, something here requires you to take some time to think and um and plan. Don't jump into trying to figure out things or, or resolving things if you don't have all the information. Um, if waiting can result with having more information about something and then making a decision. I do see that someone potentially has their engagement on hold or their um, like their plans kind of take a different direction. Now, I think it could be just a break or a hold because of circumstances, exterior circumstances that require to just move things a little bit, move things around. So maybe it's just changing the date, right? Um, or postponing the move date, you know, something like that. judgment I think there's going to be maybe an announcement or something or something on the news or something that applies to more people or to a bigger maybe a community it's like it's not just you or this or these people it's like something bigger um, that kind of creates these circumstances of having to delay something or having to put something on hold um, if that's the case, I'm sorry, but don't worry about it. You know, everything is for the better. Every delay is for the better. I also see someone called to do something that is important. Um, but they need to put other things on hold as well because of priorities. Now we have two pages, page of wands and page of cups. Hey, cuties. Um, so there could be children. This could be your children or um, you have, yeah, you, there's, there are parents and their children. You might be the parents, you might be the children. I, sorry, wasn't that difficult to say. Um, yeah, I do see family involved. There's like family stuff. Mm -hmm. 
one of the kids is away or traveling or wants to travel or needs to travel or is called to go somewhere. Um, maybe this couple will decide to travel instead of and postponing uh, whatever plans and decide to travel instead and then do it the other way around, go to their uh, lengthy honeymoon and then do the marriage thing. <laughs> it's interesting what's coming through. Um, temperance, but things are really going to work out for the better. This is for everyone's highest good. The timing will be, if something gets delayed, the new timing will be a lot better. Um, it's like, you might be upset over it at first, but then you're like, oh my God, I'm so happy that it, took, it got delayed because then this and that could have happened or, you know, something like that. You'll feel like it was blessed. You know, it's, it's, it, it is blessed. There are two angels on the table with judgment and temperance. There's healing, there's mysticism. Some of you are um, called to study therapeutic uh, methods that are alternative. Uh, some of you have healing abilities. Some of you are, um, um, you heal with art. I'm hearing therapeutic horsemanship for some, which is beautiful. There is love here. It will work out. Um, there's a sense of a mission, a sense of a purpose, a sense of... Two archangels. And two pages. I see two children that are, are very um, spiritually guided and protected. They have like angelic presence around them, uh, divine protection. Taurus had um, angelic protection in their reading. I might want to watch Taurus. Um, Yeah, there's something very special about these children. They like, they either communicate, some, at least one of them uh, communicates with, um, with with divine beings. Maybe they're channeling, maybe they're medium. Um, it's very important, especially if they're young, to encourage that and to not, um, not make them even by accident feel like there's something wrong with them or that it's weird or, uh, or brushing it off. Like it's important to um, contain and support it. See, I see writing. Someone is a great writer. There's something about their writing that is very sacred, that is very guided by the divine. Um, like they get like real spiritual messages. Um, like they channel their their creative writing is channeled, or at least parts of it. So it could be maybe spirit infused with spiritual messages. Three of Swords, right underneath the Four of Swords underneath the empress. I see a child that is feeling very bruised and very hurt by their mother. It's like a wound that keeps opening. Whenever it's about to feel like it's going to get closed just a little bit, suddenly it's like torn um, apart again. And back to bleeding. So this child is really used to constantly being in a healing process because they're constantly injured or feeling so anyway. So they've constantly practiced their healing muscle, their muscle, their ability and skill and talent of healing. Uh, and I think created a healer.
Wow, Ace of Cups and Page of Pentacles, Cancer. So, first of all, if there are delay delays, if there is something that is being postponed, everything is really working out for the better. It's going to be at the perfect timing, at the perfect place, um, and it's really going to be for the better. Um, it will also serve as an opportunity to something greater somehow. I can't say exactly the details how. Here, let me show you the cards. So I'm going to continue this reading. We're not done yet, but just so you know, I'm going to create a love sequel where we're going to look into you and your person or this, whoever this couple is. Um, and we'll see an in-depth understanding of the dynamic and also how things are going to unfold, unfold in the next month from when you'll be watching it. Um, okay, so that's available here on YouTube. I will put it here at the end screen, but also um, link below. Okay. Three, four, three. An ancestral karma is now um, healing. There's a new direction that this um, family tree is taking that creates a shift. Or it reverberates difference, differently and creates a shift. Um, there's healing of that. I do also see um, healing of a broken heart from maybe a past unrequited love um, and someone coming in and offering something very tangible and present that kind of heals it and gives a different experience that makes the person could be you feel um, really loved and chosen I'm hearing. There, it's gonna make you feel chosen or this person. Just curious. Normally I do this online via sequels, but I, want to, I feel like I want to do this now as well. Taking the major arcanas. I do see a sacred union of soulmates. Um, so once again, this could be this sacred marriage. Let's keep it this way. Order of appearance. All right. Some of you are part of a family that has lost, and this is not a premonition, I'm speaking in past tense, no one freaking out on me, has lost a father figure or, or you know, paternal figure. And there might be someone new entering the scene, like maybe the, the mother is meeting someone new or introducing someone new to the children. Um, if that's the case, and this has to be felt good as well, right? These, remember these are gen general readings. Um, this is really supported by whoever has passed away. They're sending like their, they just want, they want her to be happy. They want the children to be happy. Um, as long as this person actually makes them happy, of course.
I'm hearing there are other family members that can make this situation better. I see two great great parents or grandparents if they passed away that are really watching over you and um, really guiding you and are talking to you whether you can hear them or not. They're, they're very, very present. For some of you, the, the, they are a Cancerian. Like I'm, I could be actually picking up on a cancer person that has passed away for some of you. Mm. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll continue in the sequel. Um, stay magic, stay true. I hope to see you there and either way, I'll see you soon. Bye for now.